Many people now swear by their in-car satellite navigation systems, pointing out how much easier it is than struggling with a map. Fortunately, however, most people pull over to map read. But despite all manufacturers recommending that they shouldn't, many people now try to adjust their sat-nav systems while driving along, which creates a real danger of traffic accidents. So if handheld mobile phone use is banned, shouldn't they be too? A research team from the School of Computer Science and IT at the University of Nottingham, led by Dr. Gary Burnett, are using a purpose-built driving simulator to study how the use of different sat-nav systems affects the driving of members of the public of all ages. The key issue in a safety-critical road situation is whether the design of these computer systems makes them a distraction, and if so, how much of a distraction. Visual distraction is clearly an, an obvious issue when you've got, you're bringing in a computer display into the car that people need to look at while, while driving. There's the, the, the biomechanical physical distraction of your hand off the wheel um, and having to press buttons, um, etc. while driving. And then there's the cognitive, the mental distraction associated with having to think about things. So if you've got for example, for a navigation system, confusing voice messages um, that people don't really understand. You know, what, what is it trying to tell me? Um, um, you know, what is this distance, 500 feet? You know, how far away is that? People confused by that, that, that can provide a, a cognitive distraction um, and that can have effect on their driving as well. Simply placing the system in a position which forces a driver to look away from the road is an obvious problem, but there are many others. The research team's initial studies of this area of human-computer interaction, or HCI, show marked differences in the software design of different systems, which has significant safety implications. For example, the same functions that took just 18 seconds to complete on one system took almost a minute to do on another. The complexity of the system design, how many buttons to press, how many levels to go through to access different commands, and how many glances away from the road, are all distractions the researchers were able to measure and compare while studying how people's driving altered, with some straying into other lanes or into the central reservation. If you deviate, deviate out of lane, then you're a, then you're a hazard um, uh, to, to, the, to those around you. You've, um, clear safety implications. The other thing that um, uh, that high levels of distraction lead to is you, it affects your ability to respond to, to an unexpected event, the car in front suddenly slowing down, pedestrian walking out in front of you. All of those things um, uh, you know, have, have been found in our research and, and other people's research and, um, and it's, so it's absolutely critical that the systems are designed to, to minimise distraction. In Japan, where the technology has been available for 20 years, over 3.5 million vehicles have systems installed. And in the late 90s, the Japanese Transport Ministry began to identify accidents caused by drivers distracted by the route guidance displays. Today, all cars for sale in the Japanese market have standardised the controls of in-car navigation systems so that many functions are blocked once the vehicle is in motion. While the Nottingham team's research continues, the marked disparities between systems suggest that similar steps may be needed in other countries too, as the use of sat-nav systems grows in popularity. While the sat-nav system's danger area is in information overload for the driver, there are a number of other computer advances being introduced into cars which may take too much control away from the driver, like adaptive cruise control and automatic lane keeping systems, which could result in driving under load with the driver not involved enough. We need to, to, to look for some form of happy medium bet between you know, the areas of, sort of overload and underload. The driver doesn't, needs to be involved enough so that they don't just switch off from driving and you know read a book, fall asleep. They need to, to be engaged to, to, to monitor displays and, and realize the importance of this. Um, uh, and at the same time, we don't want systems to be so overly complex that people don't understand them, that they, they take their eyes away from the road and, and too much and um, are not engaged in, uh, enough with, um, with you know, the core driving task. So whatever computer enhancements we introduce in the future, it's still crucial that it's the humans who are in the driving seat.